Ah, the moon. The object we take for granted so often, floating around the Earth once every 27.3 days, is the primary reason for oceanic tides, certain weather patterns, and quite possibly, life as we know it. So, like any good mad scientist would wonder, what would happen if we nuked it? Hey everybody, Nerd Herfer here, and today we're asking the question, what would happen if we nuked the moon? So I'm not the first person by far to think of such a wonderfully insane idea. During the Cold War, back in 1958, Project A-119 was devised in an effort to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. This project was meant to serve two purposes. One, to demonstrate military superiority to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union actually had a similar idea. And two, to understand more about the moon's geological structure. Turns out nuclear weapons are not only really great at destroying stuff, but they're also great at excavating a large amount of surface material and sending shockwaves to the interiors of planets. It is actually thanks in part to the Cold War and to controlled nuclear blasts that we discovered plate tectonics and know as much as we do about Earth's interior. Famous astrophysicist Carl Sagan was actually on the team that helped model the effects of a nuclear blast on the moon's surface. Project A119 was cancelled for fear of intense public backlash, and the space race with the ultimate goal of landing a human on the moon became the top priority. The Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1963 and the Outer Space Treaty in 1967 actually made nuking the moon illegal, so it probably won't happen anytime soon. The popular culture opinion is that detonating a nuclear weapon on the moon would cause the moon to break apart, either directly or by destabilizing the moon's orbit causing it to break apart after the fact, as was portrayed in the 2002 movie The Time Machine, where nuclear excavation in 2037 caused the moon to deorbit and break apart. Could the ultimate man-made weapon of mass destruction actually cause such an apocalyptic event? Let's find out! The world's strongest nuclear weapon ever tested was Tsar Bomba, a Soviet thermonuclear device with an explosive yield of 50 megatons. That's 50 million tons of TNT. This was actually scaled down from the original design that would have yielded up to 100 megatons of TNT. That's ridiculous! So let's think of what would happen to the moon. Let's put the energy yield of Tsar Bomba into a usable physical unit such as Joule, something that we can actually use for calculations. And if you do that, 50 million tons of TNT equals roughly 209.2 quadrillion joules of energy, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's 2092 with 14 zeros after it. Amazing. So one other thing about nuclear weapons that makes the problem a little bit more complex is that nuclear weapons explode and release their energy in all directions. So in order to do the most damage to the moon possible, and to simplify the problem, we are going to concentrate all the energy from Sarbamba into a downward force onto the lunar surface. And to simplify things, all of that energy will be kinetic energy. So to put this in perspective, our new downward exploding nuke is now the equivalent of a 250 foot wide asteroid hitting the moon at about 25,000 miles per hour, which is about as fast as you should hit that like and subscribe button. So what sort of damage would this do to the moon? How big of a crater would Sarbamba make now that we've made these assumptions? Well thankfully, in planetary science, we have an empirically derived formula for crater formation that's based on the meteoroid and planetary densities, local gravity, meteoroid radius, impact energy, and the angle of impact. But, if you absolutely hate math, the Lunar and Planetary Science Institute also has a convenient crater calculator on their website, and I'll leave the link to the calculator in the description below. So after performing our calculations, we find that our Sarbamba nuke would leave a crater that's about 0.85 miles wide. That's about 17 football fields in diameter. And the crater would be about 1,200 feet deep. Wow. The heat generated would be enough to melt about 2 million tons of moon rock. About 300 million tons of moon rock would be excavated, and about 0.3% of that material would escape the moon's gravitational pull. This would leave about 876,000 tons of moon rock orbiting the Earth. Oh, that's a lot of damage! And some of that might end up as meteors falling to Earth. But how much damage is that really? How does that compare to other craters on the moon? 
Well, the average crater on the moon is actually about 10 miles wide and about 2,100 feet deep. So not only would humanity's largest nuclear weapon ever made not cause an apocalyptic lunar destruction event, it would barely even leave a dent in the lunar surface as far as everything else goes. So what about in terms of destabilizing the moon's orbit or deorbiting it? Well, between 2009 and 2016, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter observed about 222 lunar impacts that left craters larger than 10 meters in diameter. So impacts that excavate and eject a large amount of material and transfer a lot of momentum to the moon are actually quite common, and clearly it hasn't done anything to the moon's orbit. As a matter of fact, the moon is moving away from Earth about 2.2 inches every year. So in fact, the opposite is happening, and that's due to tidal forces interacting between the moon and the Earth. So to summarize, humanity has a long way to go before we can do something stupid like blow up the moon. Maybe one day we can evolve into a civilization that can build devices capable of destroying planets or moons. Maybe if we continue to reach for the stars, we might be among them one day. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any other wild science questions and I might answer them in a future video. And also don't forget to subscribe so you can see the videos in the future. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.